On the question of North and South, I don't think the situation is as bad as the 60s or as bad as the anti-Hindi agitation of 1950s. But the reason why it is kept boiling, this nasty venomous pot is kept boiling, is because of the most pernicious form of secessionist movement the history of this country has seen. It is Dravidianism and Dravidianism alone. It is not Kashmir militancy because there the enemy is clear. Because there is support from across the border. Here there is someone sitting inside, enjoying funds from several other places and he is doing this on a regular basis. And he is doing this since the birth of the Russian Revolution because this movement also started in 1917. So, I think Dravidianists must be held responsible. But the other side of the equation, I said this in my lecture at BHU. Everyone from whichever part of the country they may be, if they think of themselves as Bharatiya, apart from their mother tongue, they must learn another Bharatiya language. Without a doubt. If you don't do that, you may learn a particular language because of economic reasons, because you have to move to some place or whatever. But I would want a greater integrative reason for learning another language. It shouldn't be just economics. Because you'll still learn the language, but Grina to Khatam na Yogi na. That will still go on. You're learning the language because that's your means of livelihood. You can't survive without it. But the poison within and the separatism within will not die. Which is why I switch to Hindi often. To say my complexion and Hindi get along really well. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> they will get along well. There's nothing wrong with it at all. After all, the purest form of Sanskrit has survived in the South, not anywhere else. For historical reasons. <laughs> so we will, we will protect it. We don't have a problem with it at all. I can't have a problem with a language which has the very same script as Sanskrit. Dravidians have a problem with Sanskrit and that is why they have a problem with Hindi is the calculation most people miss. Their problem is with the Hindu identity and therefore everyone who represents the Hindu identity is a problem. So the person coming from the cow belt who speaks Hindi is a problem precisely for that. And this is a very different example to give. I would say they were put in their place better by perhaps Nehru at some point and Indira Gandhi at some point actually. Whereas we are massaging their ego by constantly spewing this lie that Tamil is the oldest language. Don't say that. Tamil need not be the oldest language for it to be respected. There are other reasons for it. Because obviously it is certainly older than Hindi, that is equally a fact. It has its own rich literature. It has its own vocabulary. When I say its own, it doesn't mean it's isolated. Because you see, as Bharat, we have literally, it's like a vast ocean. Where every small tributary or river has drawn from other, let's say, tributaries or rivulets. It has happened across the board. Because one thing that is common to most parts of this country are the two epics, the Mahakavyas. So naturally, your examples, when you think of food and strength, you'll think of Bhima. When you think of questions, you'll think of Yaksha Prashna. Or you'll think of the discussion between Yama and Nachiketa. You'll have these discussions. So the examples are common because the culture is common, the throat is common. The current fight is sub-regionalism being given precedence over the civilizational identity. And the civilizational identity is the product of thousands of years of synthesis. And that is being undone. Pull each thread at a time. Kapda kaan se bache ga uske baad. Next, ma'am. Uh, 